Greetings viewers, I am Eric the Car Guy and thank you for tuning in today. Today I'm going to be working on my 2008 Acura TL. Uh, you might remember from the initial inspection that it had a check engine light for both oxygen sensors, front and rear. Uh, these are the primary oxygen sensors located at the top of the catalytic converters on both banks of the engine. They both have the same part number. I didn't get Honda parts, I just went for these Denso parts, which I believe are the original equipment manufacturer anyway. So in other words, I got these a lot cheaper than if I bought them through Honda. I believe they're the same stinking part. A couple of things that I just want to share with you when installing these and removing them that I hope will help you if you need to install oxygen sensors on your J-Series V6 Honda. Job one is going to be to remove some engine covers to gain access. Um, this cover on the side is clipped in here usually, but mine has been broken in the past. Um, so yeah, so there's usually a clip right here that goes into there. Next, I'll remove the upper engine cover and you can do that with a flathead screwdriver. You just go into these plastic clips, give them a 90 degree turn like that. And then it has a couple of rubber clips in the back. Let me pull up. You're gonna need access back behind here also. Um, these covers start with this side over the brake fluid and such. Over there, it sort of clips onto this cross brace. And then this other one, if you pull these tabs forward, that releases it. So It's also clipped in here and here on this crossbar back in here there's a couple clips and since I'm having so much fun removing engine covers well let's remove the cover over the top of the battery Ooh. that one still had its clip that's how they're supposed to come apart the primary O2 sensors are located in the tops of the catalytic converters on this engine so one in the front here and one in the back here I'll give you more detail on that located on the back of the engine is the rear O2 sensor you kind of have to dig down for it. Um, this is the power steering hose here. So almost directly down underneath it is where you want to go. And you can just barely see the top of the wires right there. The front oxygen sensor is easy to find. It's right there coming out of the top of the catalytic converter. The same is true for the rear. It's just harder to see. The connector for the O2 sensor is located here. Just follow the wire from the sensor over and that's where it is. Just to make it easier for you to see things, I'm going to remove this overflow. Uh, which is just held down by a 10 millimeter fastener here. This isn't necessarily a part of the procedure, but it could make it easier for you to gain access. I'm going to show you after I take this connector off, but there's a little tab underneath here that connects it to the uh, holder or thing that fastens it to that clip there. So in order to do that under here, there's this clip. So just move that piece of plastic out of the way and you'll be able to slide that off of that retainer. And you just disconnect it. Pushing down on this part of the connector, we'll disconnect it. Before I fully commit, now I know that these are the quote unquote original equipment manufacturer for this sensor, but before I fully commit, which you'll see what I'm talking about in a minute, I just wanna make sure that this sensor will plug in and the wires match up. It does. Here's the thing that's most important, and this is my method for doing these sensors. Um, it's very difficult to get a socket on here. They do make O2 sensor sockets, but O2 sensor sockets are made for installation more than removal. And the reason for that is, is most of them have a split, and if you try to put any stress on them, that they will spread at that split and round things off. So what I do is I just go in with a pair of side cutters like this, and I clip the wires right at the top of the sensor, like so. And that's why I say make sure it fits before you commit because you're gonna cut the wires. In order to get the socket down on here, which will be a 7-8 socket, uh, I haven't known O2 sensors to be of a, a different size. What it looks like I'll need to do is remove this shielding. There's two 10 millimeter fasteners holding that on. Socket should go right down on it now. And it does. Then I'm gonna use a breaker bar to knock it loose. Just for the heck of it, I looked down inside the top of the catalytic converter to see if there was any issues. I don't see any issues in here. It looks like the uh, substrate is intact. 
if it was all coated up with gook, then it could indicate my catalytic converter's clogged and that there's a problem there. All right, I can take off the protective cover now. Super important uh, to put anti-seize on the threads of an O2 sensor before installing it. It looks like there's some on there. They also give us a little tube of it in the uh, packet, but you definitely want to make sure that you have a good coating, but don't get it on the sensor element. Just get it on the threads. This is the reverse of what you just did to remove it. Screw it in by hand. Make sure the threads take before you commit. You don't want to cross thread that. And I'm going to use this O2 sensor socket to install it. So you can see how it slips right over the wire like that. And you don't need to over torque, you just need to snug it up so that the exhaust doesn't leak. That was about a quarter turn. Quarter turn past the time it's seated on the top of the catalytic converter. Now I can plug it back in. Go underneath and just take that slot, slide it up onto the retainer until it clicks. And I don't mind that this is routed away, but I don't want this getting into the fan. So I want to be sure that it doesn't do that. So I just want to sort of make sure that it's up and away from stuff. Also, I don't really want it up against the ignition coil either because that could cause some electrical interference. I think that'll be fine the way it is, especially once I get the uh, overflow back down in there. It is not necessary to remove the upper strut brace. However, it is gonna make access to the back of the engine much easier without this in the way. In many ways, this is easier said than done, and that's because this fuse box is attached. Also, there's another bracket back here that's attached. So you need to uh, remove this 10 millimeter, this 10 millimeter on the fuse box here, this 10 millimeter on the fuse box here, and then we still have another clip to undo after we remove those. So we'll start by removing those three 10 millimeters. There's one here. There's one over here. And then there's one in the back here for a bracket. I'm gonna start just by taking this bracket off, just laying it to the side. The fuse box is still held on by a plastic clip right here. I could show you better after I get this off of here, but you gotta push that forward and pull this up off. So right here is that clip. Just pull that clip out. On the opposite side, there is one just wire retainer. Pinch the plastic clip, pull it through like that. One last 10 millimeter fastener I forgot about, which is holding this cruise control assembly on. Now you can remove the six 12 millimeter nuts that hold it into place. You might have to push the cruise control back a little bit, but you should be able to just take the brace out now. Removing that brace opens up the back of the engine compartment a lot. With the rear brace removed, it's a lot easier to see the rear O2 sensor, and there's the wire and its connector. Here's the rear O2 sensor, and here's its connector over on this side. So you can come in from over here, undo the connector, unclip it from its bracket. Remember, they're the same part number. Oops. With the connector unclipped from its mount, like I said, it's the same thing. It's got that same clip back there. You can push it down and separate it. If these give you too much trouble, spray a little bit of WD-40 on them. It helps like electrical connectors disconnect in my experience. Ah, there we are. Okay, so on the inside of this connector is a little plastic retainer. The one for this fell out and I heard it hit the ground. So I've got to put this back in. If it fell out of the sensor side, who cares? But this is the harness side. So I got to do something about that. It only goes in one way and it clips everything together. Just pushing the rubber seal back down into it. Is that it? Yeah, that is it. Same thing as before. I'm gonna come in. 
move the power steering hose out of the way. I'm gonna come in here. I'm gonna clip the wire. There's also uh, a shield back here that needs to be removed. I'm really glad that hit the ground. <laughs> now we have a clear view of the sensor. Once again, I'm gonna clip the wires and then use my regular standard socket to remove it. Clip the wires. Seven eighths socket. My extension. And a breaker bar. the old one try to do another inspection uh, it certainly looks cleaner than the front one so I don't think we've got to be concerned about that as far as catalytic converter problems which is really good to know new sensor the same as it was on the front one thread it down in by hand and once it seats, you can get the uh, breaker bar and O2 sensor socket out. Give it about a quarter turn. And then reconnect the connector. Okay, because it went together so easy, I know that I got what I did earlier done correctly. So this will sit on here like this. And slide onto the bracket. From the side till you hear it click. And there it is. It's away from all the exhaust, so now I'll install that upper uh, shield. Install the coil pack. Otherwise you'll have an engine miss. And that should do it. Next you want to clear the codes uh, that were there initially that caused you to do the replacement. Uh, you can do that as easily as disconnecting the negative battery cable for like 10 seconds and that will clear all the codes in the computer. And if you, with mine, I would start it up and the codes would come on immediately, which I actually think might have been a heat ear failure or something like that, either way. Uh, so I'm going to disconnect the negative battery cable. I'm going to be replacing one of these battery terminals anyway, so no matter what, this is going to happen. But you can do this, just leave it disconnected for just a few seconds and reconnect it and that should clear the codes in the computer. So now, when I start it up, I shouldn't see a check engine light. It'd be embarrassing if I do, right? Okay, let's start it up and see if our light is gone. Yep, aside from the service light, it is gone. And that walks you through replacement of the primary O2 sensors on my 2008 uh, Acura TL, which is a Honda J-Series V6. So if you have a Honda J-Series V6 with O2 sensors placed like these are, this should walk you through the replacement. Uh, the little tips that I showed you, I hope they're helpful to you. I'll put links in the description to the parts that I used, also any additional information that might pertain to this vehicle and uh, this job. Thank you so much for watching. If you have automotive questions not covered in this video, I ask you to head over to airatthecarguy.com. That will be linked in the description along with the other stuff that I mentioned. Please be sure to like, comment, subscribe, and share this video with your friends. Thank you so much for that. Be safe, have fun, stay dirty, and I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.